Welcome to the Spider Cellar. I'm Shayla, and I build and design miniature worlds. Today, I'm building a... Wait, what's it called? It's a miniature fruit salad tree. Oh yeah, you know, classic housewarming gift. To start, I've pre-cut some armature wire, and I'm twisting them together to form the basic outline of the trunk and branches. There are countless ways to replicate trees, but I think the armature wire method is the most efficient for planning out the overall shape of the tree, and especially when posing the branches. While making trees isn't new to me, the type of leafy green foliage on the fruit salad tree is. So today, I'll be branching out a bit and experimenting with a new technique for the leaves. Now, I'll be covering all the wire up with Milliput. This two-part epoxy putty is one of my favorite materials to work with. It's easy to sculpt and carve detail into, it doesn't shrink, it can be sanded once cured, and unlike polymer clay, you don't have to bake it in the oven. Instead, as long as it's mixed together properly, this stuff fully hardens in just a few hours, allowing plenty of time to work with it if you know what you're doing. But you'll want to move quickly, because the curing process begins as soon as you mix the two parts together, and it will start to feel less like clay and more like porcelain over time. So you want to be quick or you won't be able to carve into it. Here, I'm going to take my discount dental tools and carve some bark texture. At this stage, the milliput is fairly hardened, but still slightly malleable. So I'm just carving lines and brushing away the excess pieces. After letting the milliput cure for a few hours, it's time to get to painting. I'm pretty indecisive when it comes to choosing a base color, and most things, but I settled on using just a standard light brown or leather brown from Army Painters. All I'm doing is laying down a solid color foundation here, making sure to cover all the white parts so that the wash and dry brushing stages can really work their magic. And I'm going right to the wash here, using a dark blackish brown to really soak into the details and outline all the beautiful carving work from earlier. Then, with the dry brushing technique, I'm just lightly brushing essentially dried paint over the textured bark to create some lift and highlights. And here is where I diverge from other tree methods I've used in the past. This is Green Polyfiber by Woodland Scenics, and I'm going to use it to create kind of a canopy resting on top of the branches here. Then, using some clump foliage, also by Woodland Scenics, I will attempt to replicate a leafy green tree. I really wanted to avoid using hot glue on this because it just sounded like a nightmare to avoid strings of dried hot glue poking out of the tree canopy. So I tried spray adhesive, and then I tried brushing on watered down PVA glue, and then I tried just PVA glue, and literally halfway through, everything fell off. So I used hot glue, and it actually wasn't that bad. What's unique about the miniature fruit salad tree from the show is that it contains a variety of fruit all on one tree. I decided it would be best to 3D print as much of the fruit as I can to get the same proportions. And luckily, I was able to find STL files for apples, oranges, bananas, and pineapples. But no watermelon, so I'll be sculpting that with more milliput. What's fun about shows like Futurama is that some of the concepts introduced are potentially scientifically feasible, to an extent. Before making this video, 
I wondered if anyone had already figured out how to genetically modify a tree to grow multiple types of fruit at once, and the answer is technically yes. But the fruit must be genetically similar to each other. So while you currently, to my knowledge, can't buy a tree with watermelon, pineapple, bananas, apples, and oranges, you could buy a tree that produces peaches, plums, and nectarines, and then just bonsai the tree if you have that skill. But I don't. So there you have it. The future is now. watching. Please like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments below what you want to see me build next time. Until then, bye!